we go, here we go. Put the saddle on the unicorn, let them know you're first born. No, I ain't the first born, I'm the second born. Yo, I'm 36 and I wear a 38. Should I say, it doesn't matter. I used to hang around the kids that did, they digging in the crates and vomit freights. And then I used to be in love with a girl named Candace, but I won't say her last name, but just wait a minute. Wait a minute, you don't want to have that guy in it? Before I vanish in the smoke in the air like a capsule. Who's got it going on? Not Lionel Richie's little scruff back in the 80s as he thought it was, but I think he, that's why I agree with it. I don't want to diss Lionel Richie. I'm on the microphone, not Lionel Richie Cunningham. I like to go to a portrait slam, and I like to eat up MCs like lambs. No, I don't eat lamb, but I scram like an egg. I'll go to the Devo Times back in the day, plague. Good luck, buddy. Here's a break a leg. I'll break your face with the beat, because I bring you the lyrical heat. After you nod your head, I never kick you a kick box. I rock nonstop on any ghetto block, a suburban block, a rural block. Yo, even at the boulevard, MCs wear leotard. That's why I go for them, go for them, their spleen, Halloween, Team Wolf. After dark, out the bush, smoke kush. No, I like the northern lights at night. On the mic device, I give my head lights. No advice, I don't have headlights. Good night. Yo, it's a nice day, out day, everybody's playing around in the bar like, hey, like crucial conflict from the west side. I don't know them well, but I respect they grind. I'm on the microphone, I'm a porcupine, but I'm not stuck up like a chick from the vines where she drinks nothing but wine. And I do it like a freestyler, like divine styler. I'm on the microphone, I hit hard with beats like graduates or rock while I'm a back. <laughs> You know, that does my thing. I just want uh, everyone to know that I love the Windy City, the positive people, the people that keep it real for you and me to live in from all walks of life, from everywhere in the world. Where you from the, the gutter, the lower middle class, the ghetto, the middle class, lower, every, and the high upscale, rich or whatever, in between middle, it doesn't matter. Everyone has eyeballs and hearts. It's hard because it gets all buffy. One of my friends I like a lot is Yams. We'll probably see him around. He did that right here. It's pretty nice. Yams. Yeah, part of what I like to see. And all these artists, I may not know all the names, but I see the faces. I should hide this like bag. But uh word up, man, this is Chicago, like this is a this is hip hop playground for a player like this. If you don't pay your bills, you'll be digging in there, kid. <laughs> you know any of these people? Ah! What about these guys? These guys, so many guys that I don't know, but you know, hopefully they're swell kids. They've never done anything to me. How did I first hear about them? Well, the first time I heard about Sharky was the first time I met him, which was when he came up to me. He just like walked up to me on the, on the street in um, 97, in the fall of 97, when I was a student, which is, you know, how he meets a whole lot of people. And I was just one of them, and I bought, I don't, I think he had one tape before this called Fuck R&B, part one. And then when I met him, it, he had I Wonder, which I still have the, the original tape of, which is like my all-time favorite hip-hop tape like of all time ever. Fahim made the beats for that one. Yeah, 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 he just rolled up on me like, you you know, you like the hip-hop, say, you know, and of course I do and did and have and, you know, bought it from him and when I heard it I was like, whoa, this dude is on some different shit, you know, right away it was, it was very, very obvious, Pain, painfully obvious. Oh, I think that it's, it's almost like an anti-style kind of, you know, whereas like a lot of people like high, high post and get into talking about what, I mean, he, uh, people boast and it's always been a part of rap and stuff like that, but like Brian is on some, some other shit out of, le out of left solar system field, you know, where it's, some of it is real existential and some of it is just plain about like poop, like actual poop. And that, yeah, <laughs> and that's one of the things that's so brilliant about it is because it's unpredictable. The only thing that's predictable about it is that it is its unpredictability. 
you know, which I think is fantastic because rap has become so like complacent and dormant and boring and tiresome and kind of repetitive and monotonous and lame, you know, that like Brian removes that. Freestyling by diarrhea. Now this is nasty. Wait. Oh God, hygiene. At the end of the day, it's me, my friend. Never do I stop Royal Rugged Hip Hop. I ride to the top. I don't like diarrhea. Ugh, I don't like that shit. I don't flip, flip, flop. I'm a real soldier, party goer. I play MCs like a gopher. When I rhyme, I shine next episode. Story shall be told. Rainy weather or not, you like it. You bite it. You love it. You need it. Exotic, toxic romance. Take a chance. Lance, I feel strongly. Diarrhea. Ugh. Ugh, I'm not hungry. How you doing, kids? The things that he say is crazy. Like, Charleston Chewbacca. Like, that's crazy. Like, who would think of that? Like, his random lyrics. But at the, at the end of it, it's like you'll learn something out of his music. Like, you listen to it over and over. You're like, man, what is he talking about? If you really, like, listen. Like, this dude is really talking about shit. Like, people slip out, like, on him, dude. Like, this dude is talented, dude. Very unique. But he definitely talks about his, his life and what he's been through and his every day. You know, he's always selling CDs. Every day, that's his, that's his job. He wakes up, he lives, he breathes from music. That's a circular. Uh, you know, he puts his flyers out everywhere and it was like, uh, he had a, uh, you know, he's got his phone number, his voicemail. It's like, don't, you know, give, give, me a, uh, give me a call or something. So I think we would like drunk dial him all the time for a while, for like a year and a half or two years, I would, and he, I would always drunk dial him like, you know, like maybe, maybe if I drunk dial him, it'll end up on a record someday, you know, or maybe it did, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I thought, I always thought that was kind of cool because here's a person who's like getting his message out there and you don't know what's gonna happen when it, once it's out there. But he's actively getting it out there, like you're gonna meet the guy you got who made this record when you get that record, you know? So that, that I always kind of thought that was interesting. <laughs> uh, I seen him once we were, it was probably a Chicago Rocks meeting or something. And, and he, <laughs> he's the only one break dancing, but he's break dancing like, like, man, I was thinking like, whoa, some of these moves are dangerous. So he did this thing where he, he was trying to do a head spin, but he didn't do a head spin. Like this is his head. He did a head slide. You know, and I was like, oh, and then he landed on his back and, and he still got up. Everything's all good. He's laughing. And I'm thinking like, wow, man, like me, I'm, I'm, I'm already, I'm too fat to skate, too fat to break dance. I ain't touch, I ain't touch none of that anymore, but this dude still, and, you know, and I, I would assume he has no health insurance. So, you know, he really loves doing this <laughs> to, you know, to do suicide head slides. Uh, we'll call that move. <laughs> I was in when I'm writing, I'm trapped in between the line. 